The 502nd Heavy Panzer Battalion was one of Germany's most successful heavy tank battalions during the Second World War, claiming the destruction of 1,400 tanks and 2,000 guns. Though the 502nd was the first operational here Tiger tank unit, the battalion's 2nd company was not formed until the spring of 1943. Despite this, it quickly drew in a number of very skilled tank commanders. Otto Carius was one of the most distinguished, and probably the most well-known here Tiger commanders of the war. He served with the 502nd 2nd Company, from mid-1943 until he was severely wounded in mid-1944, when he was shot a total of seven times. The 2nd Company, which was equipped with new Tiger tanks, took part in a number of operations on the Eastern Front. One of the more notable of these was at the village of Malinava, near Duneburg, southern Latvia, in July 1944. In June 1944, 1st Lieutenant Otto Karius and the 2nd Panzer Company were transferred to Duneburg to fend off the Soviet offensive against Army Group North. The German army had been reduced in strength by half, as a result of the two years of continuous fighting on the Eastern Front. They were outnumbered by the Russians, in terms of manpower and equipment. On the 22nd of July 1944, the second company of heavy tank battalion 502nd was the only tank battalion of the German Army Group North, covering a front of 800 kilometers. Lieutenant Otto Karius received intelligence that Russian tanks had been spotted in a nearby Latvian village named Malinava, north of Duneburg. Karius, with his company of eight Tigers, headed towards the village to halt the Soviet advance. After ordering his column to halt on the outskirts of the town, Karius and 1st Lieutenant Albert Kirscher, who was also one of the most decorated commanders of the 502nd Heavy Panzer Battalion, decided to reconnoiter the small hamlet, with the help of a Kubel wagon. As they approached the village, they came across a senior lieutenant from an assault gun battalion north of Malinava, that had attempted to break through to the south. The commander of the battalion had ordered the village attacked, but the only result had been the total loss of seven assault guns. He was on his way to call in replacement forces. Carius promised him that he would be able to drive to his commander in two hours, at the latest. Carius and Kirscher quickly discovered that the village was already in Russian hands, and fled before being discovered by the enemy. Carius was well aware that the troops in the village were only the vanguard, awaiting the arrival of the rest of the Russian force. He realized that this was the critical time to attack and recapture the village, before the reinforcements arrived. Carius returned to his company for a briefing, and explained his plan to take the village. He decided to storm the village with only two tigers rather than the entire company, because there was only one unimproved road into town, and he was concerned that the column would be exposed to enemy fire if the entire company advanced. Carius and Kirscher's tigers will drive into the village at full speed, and surprise the Russians. The Russians must not be allowed, to fire a single shot. Lieutenant Nienstedt, will bring up the remaining six Tiger tanks. They will remain on the reverse slope until further orders are given. Carius reminded Kirscher, that surprise and speed were critical to his plan. The radio communication was checked once again, and then the engines were started. Carius and Kirscher's Tigers roared away. Carius led the charge in his Tiger, with Kirscher's Tiger close behind. When Carius Tiger No. 217 was about to enter the village, two T-3485 tanks were observed rotating their turrets. At this moment, Kirscher's Tiger No. 213 which followed Carius at about 150 meters, fired and knocked them out before they had a chance to shoot. After Kirscher had closed on Carius, he radioed and pointed to the right. They were surprised for a moment, 
They thought they were in front of a king tiger that had been captured by the Russians. What they were looking at was the Red Army's new killing machine, a monster main battle tank that was designed to smash tiger tanks. It was the IS-2 or Stalin heavy tank. It had 120mm of protective front sloping armor, and had an impressive 122mm main cannon, that was powerful enough to penetrate a Tiger tank's armor. It was a vehicle that they hadn't yet seen in the northern sector of the front. After the initial hesitation, it occurred to him immediately that only the running gear was typically Russian. Karius opened fire and the tank burst into flames. At the edge of the village, Karius and Kersher surprised a unit of IS-2 tanks lined up in a rest area. The two Germans had only minutes before the Russian crews reached their tanks. They began firing at the stationary Russian tanks, destroying them one by one. Some of the crews managed to get into their tanks and fire back. This is when a design flaw was noticed by the Germans. Because the 122mm cannon was so big, the Russian gunner had to depress the gun all the way down to load it, and then bring it back up to find its target again. As a result, the IS-2 tank had a low rate of fire, which proved to be a major disadvantage in a tank battle. The slow-loading Russian tanks couldn't keep up with the rapid-firing Tiger tanks. This tank-on-tank -tank action was all over in less than 20 minutes. Karius and Kersher had managed to destroy 17 of the new Joseph Stalin heavy tanks, and two T-3485 tanks. Although the Russians were attacked by surprise, Karius' quick and accurate recognition of the situation and the excellent tactics used, were the main factors in the outcome. Lieutenant Karius received, Oak Leaves for his Knight's Cross, for his involvement in and around Duneburg. If you have enjoyed the video, please subscribe and support the channel for more. Many thanks for watching.